you know, you, we all want to be there to help the people we love. You know, we really do. We do want to help the people we love. Like, we do. You know? And, um, but, you know, some, you know, but we all have a voice inside of us. Okay? We all do. And it, Oh, I better grab the cards. It's not like, you know, one or two. It's all of us. And sometimes, throughout circumstances in life, and it doesn't mean being born with a silver spoon in your mouth, you know? It doesn't mean getting everything handed to you, right? It doesn't mean any of that. And there's so many people that have all of those things given to them, and they're not happy, you know? They, and they, they still have that thing inside of them, you know, that, that calls out, so to speak, that wants to, that has to be heard. And, you know, that's all it is. There's a voice inside all of us that needs to be heard. Now, the voice doesn't have to be right, <laughs> you know? It doesn't have to be, like, profound or deep or anything. The voice could get it wrong, too. There's no, you know, you don't have to be right. It's not the point. The point is, the voice has to be heard. And so, sometimes, you know, the voice has tried to express itself, and the voice has tried to talk so many times that it's afraid to speak, you know? And so when a voice becomes afraid to speak, it, uh, it lashes out before it speaks. So it'll open a conversation by pointing out faults. It'll open a conversation by, well, not faults, but let's call faults incongruencies, right? It'll point out um, things that, you know, might make it uncomfortable. Anything that can be thrown back at the voice, the voice is going to preemptive strike it long before the voice will give its own self a chance to speak. And so it's really sad. But like this thing inside of us that is so strong, it's not just a voice. It's something that controls our actions. It's something that that moves, it's, that's the same word, Sonny, <laughs> okay, well, I'm a writer, I use this different words for the same thing, it's a, but it's this, it's this thing inside of us which needs to be expressed, like that's, like some stories might call it our inner lover, it's the part of us that when we fall in love with someone, it's the part of us that feels accepted, it's the part of us that feels loved. And when that part of us feels loved, everything is cool. Now, obviously you can get fooled, right? <laughs> so so you gotta be careful about it. But when there's but sometimes, you know, through life, let's say say or circumstance, that inner voice or inner lover gets repressed or gets wounded over time, or one or two events, sequential events. Then that's over time, son. Okay. <laughs> then the um, you know it just you know all it does is uh, and but that's not the voice speaking. That's all of the minutia coming up before the voice is given a chance to speak, and so the voice gets repressed even further because people rile against the minutia, obviously, because it's bullshit. They rile against the minutia, and it's almost like a self-sabotage, but it's not just a self-sabotage. It's not really like they're trying to sabotage anything. It's just the voice is trying to come up, but the voice is protecting itself with all this minutia because the voice doesn't, you know, it doesn't want to get hurt again. You know, it's not, a, it's not, the voice is not protected. It has not been protected. It hasn't been supported. It doesn't, it, the voice is, it's like the tower card in the tarot. The voice, that inner lover of ours, is not supported by a foundation of love. So when it comes up and tries to come up, it's so easy, it's easily knocked down. Even if, the situation is a loving and accepting situation. You know, that's how things like 
language will cause a problem. So what happens is, <clears throat> there's this part of us on the inside, and some stories call it the inner lover. I mean, my mom talks about it all the time, but I'm kind of the one who went and this. <laughs> Anyways, so this inner lover in us wants, it's the part of us that falls in love with other people because it feels as if it's heard. Right? That's why it's so easy to fall in love with the wrong person or to fall into a false kind of love because it's so easy once the inner to, to feel validated by someone who pretends to love you. So, you know, if your inner lover is here and, you know, someone says something to bypass the critical conscious, you know, blocks that the inner lover, you know, that hides behind, then, and it resonates, like the inner lover wants to be heard. It, it's trying to be heard at all, and it's trying in the way you move, the way you dress, the way you color your hair. It's trying to be heard. Hey, hey Amy, you say, what's up to baby crap? <laughs> And welcome. I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back. And so this person comes in and they're able to bypass the minutia. And, you know, that's it's a game, right? I used to teach game, <laughs> you know, to, you know, seduction game. And then they resonate with the inner lover. But it's, you don't have to, you know, real love is not filtering through the minutia. That's not real love. Real love is not void of conflict. That's not real love. Real love, because this minutia that's here is here to protect us. The veils that we wear protect us, you know? The sounds that we only hear protect us. You know, when we say, we protect us, you know, our senses rage against the world, they only protect us. And some might say, the inner lover doesn't need protecting, but that's not true. It does. <laughs> it's fragile, <laughs> and so, so you can get a fake love when someone is uses game and they bypass the the minutia, you know, bypass all of your critical conscious filters, then, and they re, you know they say the magic words to resonate with that part of you that's inside. You fall in love with them, but it's false love. The person's not a love. You feel accepted, not love. It's different. Love is something that's different. And to say that lovers don't fight or lovers uh, always see things the same way, you know, lovers don't engage in conflict, is folly. It's not true. You know, we have differing perspectives, different languages, you know, different cultures. Even if you grow up across the street, different family values. And so, as such, lovers do fight. You know, and... So, but there's a difference between, you know, some, you know, guys ask me all the time, how do I know it's real love or not? It's because if it's a false love, right, then they're able to bypass all the minutia. Right? That's friends, okay? Friends are different than lovers. I say, hear it all the time. Find someone with similar values. Find someone who likes to do the things you do. Find someone from a similar background. Find someone who does this. Find someone. That's your peer group. <laughs> that's your best, that's your friends. Not necessarily your best friends. Those are your friends. You know, you guys grow up together. You guys work together. You do things. You fight, you play, you're on sports team together. You go to the same schools together. You know, you stay in contact with each other. You're Facebook friends. You know, you have the same cultural similarities. Those are called friends. It's not your lover. It's neat if you have, um, it's, it's neat <laughs> if you love one of your friends. Sure, why not? You guys can do lots of stuff together. But not necessarily. You know, not necessarily. We always hear also as well that we're in conflict with our friends, right? <laughs> No. Love is different. Love is super different. Yes, love can be come from one of your friends. Yeah, that's veiled. How can you not 
see that that's a veil. How <laughs> can you not see that? It's so obvious. <laughs> like, like, so, it's so, like, so, anyways, it's not, that's, that is literally, okay, literally someone who likes the same shit that you do. Minutia, I've used that word a million times today. That's someone who is into the same shit that you're into, who speaks the same bullshit you speak. Those are your friends. <laughs> like, what the hell? Thanks, Mom. They want me to write a book about you. Oh, hey. That would be great. That would be a skinny book. <laughs> it would be a fast read. Woo. <laughs> I can only write it in, I gotta write it in 26.5 chapters though, 26.2 chapters. Oh, come on, why you be like that this morning? <laughs> so Evelyn has a point there. When you can no longer say exactly why you love them, no specific trait, then you love them for real. Yeah, I agree. Love is love. That's how it works. You know, you don't love someone because, you know, you don't love, you know, you don't love someone because they're like a good singer, right? You could. <laughs> love their voice. That's really weird. <laughs> but you love, it's not about... Yeah, Evelyn is right. Love is not found on a survey. Oh, we're going to put that down. I've started putting quotes of you guys down here. Did you know that? <laughs> you guys are cute. So, <clears throat> so, love is like serious, man. Like, like, you know... There's more to it. That's not what I wanted to say today. That's not how I wanted... I want, it's what I wanted to say, but I was leading to a different conclusion. I was leading to a conclusion that even though SLC and I don't always speak the same language, because very clearly no one speaks my language. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not true. But the... Um, that's not true. You guys speak my language. And we have like some really, you know, really cool sunny starters here. But... Um, you know, it's a, it's, love is a battlefield, that's so cute. It's, you know, you have to have patience, you have to have compassion, and you have to have understanding. But it goes both ways. You can't just sit there and take abuse. You know, how many times have I pulled the trust card? Trust is a major theme here on the sunny side. Major. I have major, major trust issues. Look, I got cyber attacked yesterday. We have people attacking nonstop. I don't even do anything. <laughs> we got to attacked. You know, major trust issues. But like, the one person in this entire world I absolutely trust without anything else, without any questions in this entire world. And I will never, that trust cannot be broken. I trust SLC and there's you know in spite of my own insecurities in spite of my own questions you know in spite of my own internal dramas I trust SLC not just because I have to because I don't really have to trust anybody I'm pretty good on my own and the uh, um, I need SLC I cannot, you know, I need her. The inside of me resonates past my filters and my stumbling blocks and my own minutia. And it resonates through this, you know, field of nonsense we live in. And I see her.
I see that inner lover. I see the voice inside of her. When I'm with her, I need to touch her to feel that that inner voice is real. I know what love feels like. Not because I felt it before, but I've only ever felt it once. And I've only ever felt it with SLC. And that's how I know, and that's what I know. So, and that's what I know. Okay, I got sidetracked. So what else is going on here? Well, there's a secret that people may or may not know. And um, it's a secret on how to change your life. You know, it's not go to the gym. My mom would say, go for a jog. She said, if you go for a jog, you know, if you have a problem. But they you know, they say, go for a walk to clear your mind. I remember when I was, um, I was in Vancouver and I was really upset. And things were stressing me out. And there was no one I could turn to and there was nowhere to go. And everyone was attacking me. Anyways, the pressure was on and I didn't know what to do and I didn't have anyone to turn to. So I just started going on these long, long walks, you know. I'd walk like I'd walk literally like 40 minutes. It's like a two minute drive, right? Or 10 minute drive. But I'd walk like 40 minutes up in the mountain and all stuff uh, to school because they said, you know, go for a walk to clear your mind. You know, and people used to not understand what I was doing and they'd say things like, you know, they'd say a lot of things, you know, but they also didn't understand when I used to practice all the time either, you know, they didn't like that. <laughs> but, so that's a really interesting thing. You know, go for a walk to clear your mind. Go for a long walk to clear your mind. If you want to jog, don't jog. You don't have to jog. Just one, just like my mom says, take one foot and put it in front of the other and then do it again. One foot, put it in front of the other, and do it again. And you walk, and you walk a long time, you know? And then after a while, you're soon you're gonna walk a little faster. You know, you're just gonna walk a little faster. You know, and soon you're gonna start to jog a little. You know, you're gonna start to shuffle your feet a little. And then you walk a little faster. And then soon you're, you're running, you know? And then you don't mean to run or anything, and you do it every day. You know, you just do it. What about other things in life, Sonny? No, I'm talking, I oh, four like 40 to 50 minutes. Like, it was a long way, and it was over a mountain. No one, like, it's, and then you just do it, and then you do it, and then you do it again. And it was raining all the time, and it was cold, and it was snow, and it was just walking. And, you know... You just, well, that's, walking with bad knees is difficult. I know that. <laughs> and so you go for a walk to clear your mind. I used to hike the city, and I wrote about it. You know, I, I wrote about it on my blog, The Sunny Side. Hike the city, because I'm a city guy. Go for a walk to clear your mind. And then a walk turns into, you start to run, and then soon, then you start to fly, you know. And then you start to fly. And it's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. And then nothing can stop you. You know, you do what my mom says. You run past your problems, you know. Anyways, that's what my mom would say to do. All right. My dad would say, you got to, like, meditate and you got to focus and you got to shield yourself and you have to let the energy come in and you have to transform the energy and go out and stuff like Okay, whatever, man. It's a little complicated. So one side, it's a little too easy. Just go for a walk. And on the other side, it's a little too complicated. You got to do some kind of weird energy work, you know, just put a crystal in your pants and like jiggle it a little. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, so there's that kind of thing. But there's more. But there's more to it. So from my perspective, and I work in the world of language, right? Panda's right. Yeah, panda's right. Our little psychic panda's right. So this is, panda says, how about writing poems? That's a brilliant idea. That gets, you know, your inner voice gets to speak. So what I think, one of the ways to change your life is to change your words. If you change your language, you'll change your life. You know? Change your language, change your life. Change your words, change your life. Change your words, 
change your life. Just think about that for a second. Change your words, change your life. All right. I didn't say change how you look at things, okay? <laughs> not, let's, let, let's not get complicated here. Let's not go law of attraction or anything. Just change your words and change your life. Oh, Freezy's here. Hey, Freezy, what's up? <laughs> Freezy, they made me cut my hair. <laughs> Can you imagine? All right. Okay. Change your words, change your life. Alyssa's on point. What's she saying? Love affects everyone. Yeah, because it's a vibration. It's, it gets past the minutia. Love is beyond the minutia. Love is an energy that sees through the veils. You know, I love you. Not because of the way you look. Not because of that all that shit. I love you because of you. Now there's more. Change your words, change your life. So often we see, you know, we think love and we associate with hate. Love and hate. But... That's not how astrology works. That's not the lesson in astrology. You know, these are different planets in astrology. The opposite of Venus is not, like, it's different, you know? We talk about axis all the time, right, in astrology. This is one, this is not, you know, it's different things. <laughs> so they've got the duality wrong, you know? I don't, you know, like to talk about duality, but they've got it wrong. And we're going to talk more and more about duality later on. Uh, later on as we continue on with the sunny side here and I'm talking more about this because we use duality to pull out our inner lover okay to really love in this world you need duality to pull it out but it's not easy and it is dangerous so the opposite of love is not hate you know the opposite of love is fear that's the way it works change that just sit on that for a second love you know, acceptance, fear is avoidance, <laughs> you know, you move towards love, you move away from fear, right, towards love, away from fear, you know, love, fear, we move towards love, it's a magnet, fear, we move away from fear and towards love, love and fear, it's one of the things they used to teach me back in economics, <laughs> when, I, as I was, when I was an economics major. We have push and pull factors in everything. So, hate, you know, the, um, you know, the, so like, forget about hate today. We'll talk about hate another day. But love, the opposite of love is fear. So love, fear. We're always moving towards love. Love is an attraction. Fear is a repulsion. And somewhere along the line, we're in our comforts. You know, there's a comfort zone in here. But think about that, okay? Just think about this for a second. Love and fear, right? This is the planet that we orbit. Now, that's the way, right? This is one way, you know, it's one of the th energies you can follow. You can follow a different kind of energy. You could follow the energy of hate if you want, right? You can move towards hate. <laughs> the um, <laughs> People move towards hate all the time. It's not the opposite of love. It's a different way, you know. You can choose the way of hate. You know, it's a choice. It's your way. And there are many ways to get to where you want to go. But love and hate are not the same thing. They are both ways. I'm not saying don't choose the path of hate. It's your life, you know. I'm not goody-goody here. But I'm just saying some people choose the path of hate and some people choose the path of love. And, you know, your destiny is looking for you. Love and the opposite is fear. We move towards love and away from fear. So think about that, you know. As you're moving through the day today, think about the idea of love, love in front of you and fear behind you. You remember in the book, um, what is it? It's like this Paul Acrates says in Dune, you know, fear is the mind killer. You know, I'm going to, 
look at fear, you know, maybe close my eyes, let it pass through me, and then I'll look around and see where it went. Fear is the mind killer. Hey, Ollie, what's up? Welcome to the sunny side. Como se va? So, do you see how easy it is? <laughs> There's no hate. <laughs> it's love. I'm moving to... Love is calling you. Right? Love's calling you. And fear is pushing you towards love. That's the axis. You know? And all you got to do is change your words a little bit. That's all you got to do. Is change your words. And... The only thing in this world that fear, that I'm afraid of is a world without SLC. I, that's the only fear I have. All I want is SLC. And that's the action. All right, let me go get a nap and let's get down to this. Let me tell this girl that I love her because she deserves it. All right. Want to know some fun French words now that we're talking about words and language? So that's the secret. Maybe we'll talk about more about it. All you want to do to change your life is change your words. Don't be like, you don't have to get irregular and be like, oh, I'm this, I'm that. You don't have to be like that. You don't have to be like, this is that, this is that. You don't have to be like, oh, I can do this, I can do that. No, man. Just change a word. Change one word. You know? Just change one word, change your life. That's all you got to do. One word, you know. Even if you want to swear at someone differently, <laughs> you know. What, look at Panda. Panda paints. You know, Panda writes poetry. You know, she's highly creative. You know? And so, that's all you got to do. And so, once again, the, just all you got to do to change your life is change your words. If you want, you can go do it. My mom says, and like, you know, jog every, like, 100 miles every day. Or you can do what my dad says. These guys are extreme, right? But they're extreme super achievers here. And, like, they didn't start off like this. Like, you guys want to hear a joke? When my sister was... No, my sister was already passed away. And I was at the, the big running store downtown, right? Underneath all the super business towers downtown. And I was there with my mom. And we're looking at this running gear, right? And I used to train all the time. And, like, I was used to train and... And, you know, my dad was a martial artist at the time. And, like, he was, my dad's a jock, right? And so, the, uh, it was really funny. When you see my mom try and run on a treadmill, she, like, running on her toes like this, almost falls off the treadmill. It was so funny. <laughs> and now she runs miles every day. <laughs> it's so cute. And, like, when I was uh, upset in Vancouver, I just, you know, walk for hours and hours and hours. And I wrote about it on the sunny side. You know, I've, t I've there are uh, stories of me walking and what I was thinking, what I learned on my on my journey there. And so, you know, go for a walk to clear your, your mind. And so on one hand, you do that. On the other hand, you can, you know, shield yourself, practice energy work like my dad preaches. And from my perspective, right in the middle, you have to, um, you, you know, just change your words. It's that simple. The opposite of love is not hate. It's fear. It's a push-pull factor, you know. You guys, the law of attraction, everybody always talks about being positive. Positive doesn't mean <laughs> nice. Positive doesn't mean nice. <laughs> it's really funny. Positive is a direction. You know, we've got computer programmers here. We have rocket scientists here who watch the show. You know, positive is a direction. You know, it's what it means. Focus. And so just look at it once again. Love pulls Fear pushes. The opposite of love is fear. We move. Love is pulling you. Fear is pushing you away. You should always be moving in that direction. There is a way, and the it's when we stop the flow. And so, if love is that way, if love is over there and fear is back there, and there's a way, it's pulling us towards love and pushing us from fear. You know, the problems that stop is when we stop and we focus and try and go against the flow. And we move towards our fears and we focus on our fears and we work on our fears. Like, <laughs> they're not in front of us. Our fears are behind us. Our fears push us. Okay, whatever. You guys get the point. I'm going to go get a napkin and then we're going to go read D-Day's cards and learn more about the Major Arcana. And so, 
<laughs> All right, I'll be back in a second. Hey, everybody, welcome to the sunny side. I hope everyone is having a super amazing day. It's an absolutely beautiful day to be beautiful, and it is beautiful, beautiful because we're all in this together. All right, I'll be back in a second.